Good morning, and welcome to worship in your home this morning. My name is Pastor Matthew Schultz, and I'm the pastor here at Emanuel Lutheran Church in Niskeen, New York, and I'm glad that you are here with us this morning. Thank you for taking your time out to come together wherever we are and worship our living Lord and Savior. I especially want to welcome anyone who is worshiping with us for the first time. If you're joining us for the first time, I hope and pray that you are blessed by your time with us this morning and that you'll join us again. And today what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be continuing to look at what it means for us to be a part of the gift exchange that God has in store for us through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the greatest gift and he is the reason for the season, as they say. But he has a lot of gifts that he would like to give us. He has a lot of gifts that we are able to take from him, but he takes things from us as well. That's what the gift exchange is all about. And today we're talking about how Jesus can take our hurt and provide us with his full healing. So I hope and pray that this is going to be a message that speaks to you not only today, but also throughout the rest of your week. And we do begin this conversation this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But as we begin this time when we're looking at the gifts that Jesus gives us and we're talking about hurt, we have to admit that when we are hurt, when we're carrying that hurt with us, it brings us into some other things that aren't so good. When we're hurt by others, we start to hold feelings of resentment. We start to hold feelings of anger towards others maybe hoping bad things happen to them. And in that moment, we begin to go down a path that God has not called us into as his children. And so this morning, I'd like you to take a moment and just lay before Jesus all those places where you've allowed your hurt to lead you into feelings of anger towards others, resentment towards others, um, uh, jealousy towards others, maybe even feelings of revenge. We have to admit that when we're hurt, it is truly hard to forgive others as Christ has forgiven us. This morning, this is what I want you to know. Wherever you have hurt others, wherever you have fallen into feelings of anger, frustration, resentment, revenge against others, Jesus has forgiven you. Jesus does not hold a grudge against you, but instead, he says, as far as the east is from the west, so far are your sins from you. Jesus tells us that our Father in heaven remembers our sins no more. And that's the beauty of it. God doesn't hold anything against us. Instead, he looks at each and every one of us and says, You, my child, you are forgiven. You're free and clear. I hold nothing against you. So today, go knowing that you are completely forgiven. God's forgotten it. He's not holding anything against you. Go today knowing that you've been set free from all of your sin. So as we begin, again, this conversation, continue it, we're going to be talking about hurt. We're going to be talking about not only physical pain, but also emotional and psychological pain that we carry. 
And there is no greater story in the entire Bible than the one that Luke tells us, where Jesus exchanges a woman's hurt for his full healing. It comes to us from Luke chapter 8. As Jesus went, the people were crowding around him. A woman who had been suffering from chronic bleeding for 12 years was in the crowd. No one could cure her. She came up behind Jesus, touched the edge of his clothes, and her bleeding stopped at once. Jesus asked, who touched me? After everyone denied touching him, Peter said, Teacher, people are crowding around you, pressing against you. Jesus said, Someone touched me. I know power has gone out from me. The woman saw that she couldn't hide. Trembling, she quickly bowed in front of him. There in front of all the people, she told why she touched him and how she was cured at once. Jesus told her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. This is the word of the Lord. And if you would just pray with me this morning as we prepare to dig into what it means for us to trade our hurt for healing. Heavenly Father, as we come before you today, Lord, I ask and I pray that, that you would help us to hear your words this morning. That you would help us to believe in your forgiveness, to believe in your healing. But Lord, I ask that you would send your spirit to us so that we would have the courage to give our hurt to you so that we can be restored in the love that you have for us in Jesus Christ. We ask all this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. 12 years. 4,380 days. That's how long the woman had been suffering. She had tried everything. She'd gone to every doctor she knew. In fact, she was broke because she had spent all her money trying to find a cure. But nothing had worked. Her hope was gone. But then she heard about a man, a traveling preacher who could do amazing things. At first she was skeptical and didn't really believe it. But after all, she had nothing to lose, so why not go and give it one more try? Why not go and try and get rid of the pain? So she went to see Jesus. We don't know this woman's name. But once we hear her story, she's hard to forget. As I said, we don't know much about this woman. The woman who Luke says has an issue of blood, chronic bleeding. It's been going on for 12 years. Imagine 12 years of cramping, 12 years of hemorrhaging, 12 years of fatigue because of blood loss. As I said, she's gone through everything she can trying to find a cure. But her pain the hurt that she carries, <clears throat> it goes so much deeper than physical pain. See, according to Jewish law, this woman, she was what's called ceremonially unclean. According to Leviticus chapter 15, 
anyone who touches someone who's bleeding. They themselves are unclean. So in the Jewish culture at that time, if you were bleeding like this woman, you couldn't be touched. You couldn't be hugged. 12 years of never being hugged. 12 years of no reassuring hand coming to tell you it's okay. Instead, you've been ostracized by your own community. Maybe your friends and your family have faded away, leaving you alone. Think of the emotional pain that this woman would have felt as people withdrew from her. And over the years, everyone knowing her story, she becomes all but invisible. And then imagine the embarrassment, never knowing when the blood would soak through your clothes, never knowing when that thing that you're trying to hide becomes visible for everyone to see. Imagine the embarrassment that she would have felt day in and day out. Finally, there's the fear. The fear that her bleeding would never stop. The fear that she must have felt because she was financially ruined trying to find a cure, not being able to take care of herself financially, the fear that she would never be able to be close to someone again, the fear that she would never have an a, a, a normal life. Imagine that. Can you feel the, the hopelessness that she must have had? the despair, the resentment, the jealousy, the anger. The more I thought about this story this week, the more, the more I felt like we all, we all can imagine it. Because at one time in our life or another, we've all been there. We've all been hurt. Carrying the hurt of what someone has done to us. The abuse at the hands of someone that was supposed to love us, that was supposed to protect us. The friend or the family member who betrayed us, the, the husband or the wife that left us after saying that they would love us forever, the company that we trusted, who took away our future. No, we, we know what it is to be hurt. And we know the pain of losing relationships. The friends who drift away the children who don't call, the neighbors that move on with their life as, as yours falls apart, the loss of a loved one to death. We know the hurt of losing relationships. And we know the sting of embarrassment Embarrassed that we lost our job and have to ask for, for help. Embarrassed that we haven't been smarter with our money and now in retirement we're worried. The embarrassment of the things that I said to someone in the past. So now I'm so ashamed I can't even go and ask for forgiveness. I can't repair that relationship. The, the embarrassment over things that I've done in the past. The shame and the guilt that I carry today for things that I wish I would have never done in the past. Embarrassed that I'm in this spot in the first place. No, we, we know embarrassment. And when, when it comes to the, the sharp cut, the wound of being excluded, I think, unfortunately, again, too many of us know this pain. 
not being popular enough, not being pretty enough, not being cool enough, not being in the in crowd, not being like everyone else, being bullied because we're different. And we know the fear. The fear of losing it all. The fear that I won't be able to take care of my family. The fear that no one, no one can love me the way that I am. Isolated, embarrassed, excluded, invisible. We don't have to work too hard to imagine what this woman is going through. Because at some point, we've all been there. Hiding our secrets, silently bearing a hurt deep inside, cowering in fear, feeling hopeless. That's where this woman was <clears throat> for 12 years, 4,380 days, but in one instant everything changed. Did you notice? Did you hear what Jesus did for this woman? Sure, it's easy to see the physical healing and see the miracle of that and think that that's the full healing that he gave her, but Jesus did so much more for this woman. First and foremost, as soon as the power leaves Jesus, he stops and he waits and he calls out, waiting for this woman to come forward. The one who had the faith to reach out and touch him. Why? Because Luke tells us, to Jesus, this woman wasn't hidden. She couldn't hide anymore. For 12 years, a woman who has been hiding in her shame, for 12 years, a woman who has been invisible to her community, a woman who has been invisible to the people around her, she was invisible no more. Jesus saw her. Jesus knew her. He he knew her personally. She wasn't forgotten by Jesus. She wasn't being pushed aside. She was having her dignity restored. Someone knew her. And then... Luke tells us that she publicly, in front of everyone, told Jesus why she had touched him. Now again, this may sound like it's a small detail. It may sound like something that we really don't have to pay much attention to. But it's no small thing. By publicly telling everybody, by publicly telling her community that she had been healed, in that instant, Jesus restores her to her community. Now they know that they can once again relate to this woman. They can once again go to her without fear of being ceremonial un ceremon ceremonially unclean. In an instant, she is restored to her everyday life. She has her everyday life restored in that moment. And then in one of the most beautiful statements in the entire Bible, the only time that Jesus calls someone this, he says, 
daughter. This woman who no one wanted. This woman who wondered if anyone could ever love her again. Jesus calls her daughter. She is wanted. She is valued. Jesus claims her as his own in that instant. In an instant, Jesus exchanges all of those years, 12 years, 4,380 days worth of pain and hurt and suffering. He exchanges all of it in an instant for full healing. He fully restores this woman, taking away all of the scarring, all of the emotional pain, all of the physical hurt, all of the psychological torment, it's all gone in an instant. And what is left is the healing that Jesus gives to her. And he can do the same for you. I want to talk directly to you. To you who are carrying around hurt and shame. To those of you who have been excluded and ignored and feel invisible. I'm talking to those of you who have had to deal with the, the horror of abuse in your life. I'm talking to you, to those of you who have, who have carried the loss of loved ones with you, the loss of friendships. To those of you who have been betrayed, to those of you who are too embarrassed to talk about what you're going through, I'm talking to you. Jesus knows you. I want to say that again. Jesus knows you. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you've gone through, what you've suffered, how you felt. He knows what others have done to you. And the scars that you're carrying. Like this woman, you don't have to hide anymore. No matter how much others have made you feel less than. No matter how much others have made you feel invisible. No matter how much you have hidden from everyone else. Feeling unloved, unwanted, and unworthy. No matter how much you've gone through, Jesus knows you and he hasn't left you alone because he loves you. Jesus loves you so much that he went to the cross for you to take the pain. The pain that has been inflicted on you and the pain that you have inflicted on others. Jesus went to the cross to take that pain from you. That's why he did it. That's why he stretched his arms out on that cross, having those nails driven through his hands and his feet, having the spear go into his side, is because he is the suffering servant. He is the God who suffers with his people. Jesus knows your pain. And Jesus knows your isolation. He was isolated on that cross so that you would never be isolated from God. Jesus, Jesus was rejected so that he could take all of those times that you have been rejected. But so that you would know that he will never reject you. Jesus went to the cross to take your embarrassment, your shame, your guilt, your anger, your frustration, your resentment. He took all of it so that you could have the thing that you want the most. Healing. Real healing. And just like with this woman, Jesus is right there with you. Wherever you are, wherever you're watching, Jesus is there. Right next to you. 
And he's offering you the same exchange. Your hurt for his healing. So whatever you've been carrying, whatever hurt is deep down, the times you've been bullied, the times you've been overlooked, those times when you've been abused, times when people have left you, whatever it is, I want you to do what the woman did. And reach out. Reach out through prayer and give it to Jesus. Place it in those nail-scarred hands, knowing that Jesus understands and that he wants to take that pain from you. Let Jesus restore you today. Let Jesus restore you today in the knowledge that he will never leave you or forsake you. Let Jesus restore you in the knowledge that to him you are not invisible and you never were. Let Jesus restore you in the knowledge that you are wanted and loved. You're precious. Let Jesus' voice come to you today as he calls out to you, my daughter, my son. I am proud to call you mine. You don't have to feel excluded or unwanted anymore. You, you are loved. You are wanted. You are the most precious thing that God has ever created. And he sent his son to the cross to prove it to you. Give Jesus your hurt today so he can give you his healing. And for a moment, I also want to speak to the church, to all of us who call ourselves followers of Jesus. I'm talking to myself. We are called to welcome those who are hurt. We are a place for hurting people. We are the place where imperfect and broken people, where the ashamed and the confused, the angry and the resentful can come for hope and for healing. You and I are called to be like Jesus in everything that we say and in everything that we do, in every relationship, in every conversation. And that means that we, like Jesus, are called to suffer with the suffering. We're called to include the excluded. We are called to, to make the invisible know that they are seen and that they are noticed. We are called to welcome the outcasts. No judgment. No lectures on how people should live better before they come into our doors. No questions about how people got to the point that they are. Just grace. The same acceptance, the same grace, the same comfort that Jesus gave to us by dying on the cross for us. We need to remember as the church that we might be the person that that, that person in front of us is coming to to give their hurt. We may be the person that God is using to bring his healing into their life. And that means we've got to be really careful not to inflict 
any more damage on damaged and broken people. But instead, like Jesus, we need to welcome we need to welcome every person, no matter who they are, no matter what they're struggling with, no matter what baggage they bring. We need to welcome those people into our midst and let them know that they're home. Like Jesus, we need to call them brother and sister son or daughter because that's how Jesus welcomed us that's how Jesus welcomed you no matter what the mess was in your life no matter what pain we had caused or pain we were carrying Jesus took us in he embraced us mess and all so that he could come to do what only he can do exchange our hurt for his healing. Amen. In our prayers today, we remember, and I want to pray for the hurts that we're going through. And I'm going to also pray that God takes them away and that he raises up people around you to comfort you wherever you need it. Heavenly Father, thank you for, thank you for making us not invisible. Thank you for dealing with us when we're confused, when we're questioning, when we're doubting. Thank you for never leaving. Thank you for never rejecting us. Thank you for being proud to be our dad. Today, Lord, we ask that you would be with all those who are hurting. You know their pain. You know what they're going through. And I ask that you would send your spirit of comfort to them. Send your spirit of comfort so they know that you are there and so that they have the confidence to give you whatever it is that they're carrying. Heavenly Father, I especially pray for the Duncan family, for Alex and Ashley, Lord, we continue to pray for the Vic Cabbage family as they continue to struggle. Lord, I pray for everybody who is feeling lonely and excluded because of this pandemic. I pray for our brothers and sisters who struggle with their identity. I pray for those who are ashamed because of their financial situation. Lord, whatever it is, take it from them today. Begin to bring comfort. Lord, I ask that you would raise up people around us, people around those who are hurting. Lord, I ask that you would give us as your church a heart that is like yours able to accept love and give grace no matter what so that everyone can be restored to the people that you have called them to be the child that you created them to be 
We ask all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We get to restore hope as God's church. And we do that not only by offering ourselves to our neighbors, offering our talents, our gifts, but we also are able to offer what God has given us back to him so that we as God's church move forward together, offering hope to our communities and to our world. And so, if you'd like to continue to support the ministry of hope and comfort, encouragement, reconciliation that's happening at Emmanuel, we appreciate it. We appreciate all of your generosity. If you, call, if you don't call Emmanuel your church home, as always, I would encourage you to find a gospel ministry around you that is bringing that same hope, that same reconciliation, that same comfort into your community so that everyone can know that they aren't invisible and that God's church and God's people are here for them. Thank you for your generosity and thank you for helping spread hope. And as we go out today, we do go with God's blessing upon us. And what I want you to know as you hear this blessing, this is, this is a word, this is a word from your dad, your heavenly father. And he is giving you his blessing because he's proud of you. And so may God the father go above you to watch over you, beside you to befriend you, behind you to encourage you, before you to guide you, beneath you to make your footsteps firm, and within you to give you his eternal peace. Amen. One of the ways that we can spread hope, as you know, is through the Three Church Fund right here in Schenectady and in our area. Uh, again, um, the need is great. Your generosity is greater. And our God is greater. And so we have, we, have, we have extra hope to be able to, to, to give to those around us. And so we appreciate any support that you have for the Three Church Fund. Because all of, that, all of your donations go directly to people who are in need right now. And they are thankful. Also, um, as you can tell, talking about hurt brings up feelings if you've got those feelings today if you're if you if something I said um, brought something up and you'd like to talk about it uh, you need to know that someone is there we're here Pastor Patrick and I are here for you please give us a call uh, whatever it is whatever you might be going through there will be no judgment there will be no lectures we're here to hear you to listen and to let you know that God is there too. So please give us a call, reach out to us with your e through email, uh, reach out to me through email or through, uh, through, through a phone call, whatever is best for you. But we just wanna know, we want to let you know, especially today, um, if, if I touched a nerve today, um, I'm here, we're here. So, I'm hoping that today you are able to give that hurt, whatever it is, to wrap it in prayer, to hand it over to those scar, scar, those scar marked hands of Jesus, knowing that he knows your suffering, but also knowing that he is giving you his healing. Thank you for being with us today. And may God's comfort go with you this week. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.